Hi everyone, so we've got most people here, so thanks for joining us today. Uh, as you know, we've put together this series of expert sessions uh, to support you, ongoing time. Uh, we hope you find today's session and the others that you attend useful for your role as a mountaineering professional. I'd really like to thank uh, Cicerone for agreeing to deliver today's session and um, I'll introduce uh, Joe, who can uh, shortly. Um, before that, um, if we could just have the slides up, I'll just run through the um, housekeeping as normal. I'm sure you're really familiar uh, with the um, etiquette, as we'll call it now. Uh, so if we just uh, so say, Imminently, I'll introduce you to Joe Williams. Um, so, just a reminder about the etiquette, as I say, I think we've got most people's surnames now. Um, there will be options as normal to use the chat function or put your hand up and ask questions. Um, so I think that's all I need to say about that. So uh, I'd like to introduce and hand over to Joe Williams, who has uh, very kindly offered to run this session on behalf of Cicerone. Thanks, Joe. Over to you. Thanks a lot, Chris. Um, yes, I'm uh, Joe Williams. I'm Cicerone's Business Development Director. Um, so it's great to have a chance to talk to you, uh, to your course directors, um, and then presumably be uh, MLs, winter MLs, IMLs um, uh, as well. Um, my own experience of um, mountain training courses was, uh, I think I just turned 18 and, um, uh, and uh, did the did summer ML training and, um, and an assessment quite soon after. Um, I kind of think I probably wanted to do a summer ML from um, I don't know, probably since I was about 15 actually, but uh, obviously had to wait until uh, until 18. Um, uh, I've done winter ML training with Stuart Johnston um, outside of the civilian area. I um, was in the OTC and did a variety of, uh, um, well, pretty much most of the uh, joint services uh, courses um, that were on offer, Alpine mountaineering instructor and rock climbing instructor, those sort of things. Um, cool, so yeah, I hope, um, <laughs> I hope many of you have actually heard of Cicero, I'm, sh I'm sure you have, and they've uh, used our books before. Um, clearly some of you will know many of the areas and routes that we've got guides to uh, very well indeed. Um, so it might be nice to sort of hear about some of those things um, and those areas you know uh, particularly well. We do kind of want to make it a fairly interactive webinar rather than me just talking. Um, so I would really welcome comments and questions at any time uh, throughout. So I believe Chris has got you guys really well trained uh, in Zoom etiquette uh, and usage. So uh, we'll maybe kick things off with a, a question to you all. Um, I think you've been using the annotations function on Zoom. Um, so yeah, if you could just use that to mark uh, somewhere on the screen with some sort of annotation, um, so I know that you're engaging and, and listening. Um, so who owns uh, a Cicerone guidebook? So, um, I can see a hand. Yes. And we've got a yes. Yes, we've got some hearts and ticks. Um, brilliant. So well, uh, as we're going, um, we'll make sure that Chris reminds me to, uh, to, to pause for breath and to, uh, to chip in with any, any questions as well. And well, she'll keep an eye on the chat function um, as well to, so that I can um, pick up those things. Um, I would be really interested to hear about how much you guys happen to use Cicerone books for your own work uh, and, and personally, um, whether you ever recommend um, any Cicerone guides to your uh, to, your, to your end users and your, your end, end clients. Um, so yeah, just a, that, that question to you guys, if you can raise a hand or add a note to the chat box or um, take yourself off, off mute and chime in, it'd be, it'd be nice to know about some of that. Sorry, I've just spilt my coffee, so I'm gonna wipe it up. <laughs> Yeah, 
Oh, they're feeling a bit shy this morning, I think, Joe. Okay, no, no worries, no worries. Well, well, I can see a few people appear to be tapping in. Um, just trying. Yeah, to there's see. a nice star in the clouds on the picture, which I'll take as a positive. Cool. Um, good. Anyway, well, I'll press on. Um, okay, yeah, so as we go throughout, just, um, uh, Chris, you'll, um, it, you can just stop me and shout over the top of me and, um, uh, get some questions through. Um, that'd be great. So, um, yeah, a little introduction to, um, Cicerone and, uh, and to me a bit more. Um, Cicerone was founded 51 years ago uh, by Walt Hunsworth, Brian Evans, and their respective partners, Dorothy and Aileen. Um, Brian may be best known for his Scrambles in the Lake District guides, which um, started off with the Scrambles, and then there was more Scrambles, and then we put them into uh, uh, North and South volumes. Um, we've got a guy who's actually taking over the mantle uh, of those um, guides from Brian, there's a chap called John Fleetwood, um, and uh, they're taking them into their next generation. Uh, Walt was uh, uh, editor of Climate magazine, uh, he wrote several books, um, you may have come across his big fat uh, sort of tome, uh, Everest, um, and he also uh, penned the article uh, on both El Buttress in um, uh, Classic Rock, um, I did that route with my partner um, on Wednesday last week, sort of, as a, kind of for old times' sake. It was nice reading Walt's writing uh, there as well. So Cicerone was bought by Jonathan and Leslie Williams, who happened to be my parents in 1999. Um, we were based in Nunthorpe, Cumbria, um, from when Cicerone was founded till uh, just a few years ago, and I think it was. 2007-2008 that we moved offices to Kendall. Um, we we're a team of 15, uh, all outdoorsy in some way, shape or form. Um, my personal role is in new book development, uh, new edition development and marketing uh, development and deciding strategy uh, on that as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's just sort of a decent introduction, I think, there to, to, to Cicerone and us. Okay, thanks, Joe. So, um, I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions as we uh, go throughout the presentation this morning. So, um, can you share with us which are the most popular guidebooks? Yeah, sure. Um, so, we've always had for at least as long as I've been working at Cicerone, um, the, the, the top of the tree has always been the Tour of Mont Blanc uh, guide. Um, uh, it's obviously the most popular um, trek in, um, in Europe, possibly worldwide. Um, but yeah, there are thousands of copies of that that we, uh, that, that we sell a year. Um, the other big ones are Southwest Coast Path, um, West Highland Way, Many of the national trails, although not all of them. Um, so yeah, Hadrian's Wall. Um, and then thinking about some of the other uh, international guides um, are Camino's uh, books, so the, the pilgrimages. Uh, they're pretty popular. Um, there's an enormous market for those, uh, enormous potential market anyway. Uh, the Kamana Kodo, I don't know if you guys have come across that, it's a, it's a Shinto Buddhist pilgrimage in, um, in Japan. Uh, not particularly challenging, only a few days long, um, but that had been incredibly popular. Um, it really helped that it was timed, or that we had timed it with the Rugby World Cup. Um, and, um, and then the Olympics as well. But we, we've also got a guide to um, Fuji and the Japan Alps that's, um, that's been doing very well uh, as well. Um, in the UK, um, from a sort of day activities, um, the Lake District um, sort of walking books always do well. 
they do well in equal measure with the the low level and late walks volume and the high end fell walks volume. So there's clearly a um, a fairly equal market there. Um, Snowdonia mountain walking, um, and I'm sure that at least a couple of you guys are based in um, in Snowdonia. Uh, that's always always a popular one. Um, and most recently, the the new book. I don't know if you you've seen it before, but it's the um, the guide to the Cooling Ridge. So it's really specific, just focused on the ridge traverse. Uh, that's made its way into our our top ten bestsellers, and it was only launched um, sort of a few months ago, uh, actually. Um, of those kind of books, the it's the European international trekking, like the Tour of Mont Blanc and Chamonix Zermatt Hope Route, um, and the Caminos. That they're they're, they're popular in the UK, but there is a very sizable US market uh, as well. Um, what we tend to see is that um, we basically perceive that uh, the consumer regards Cicerone as the go-to publisher for trekking and longer distance routes. That's, um, I think, what we're our, our sort of our heartland, uh, really. Um, so yeah, these are these are what's um, what's pretty popular with our our customers um, over these last few years. Okay, thanks, Joan. Does anyone any have any questions about any of the UK books sold in the UK market, or the you know I'm thinking of the IMLs, the European market, perhaps before we before we move on? Any? Anyone? Um, did you do any in Africa? I seem to remember using one in Africa. I can't remember which one it was. And, uh, and, uh... Yeah, hi, uh, Alex, isn't it? Yes, yes. Hi. Um, yeah, we've got uh, got a few. There's a couple of Moroccan books, actually, which um, if anybody is, uh, is a, uh, an Atlas Mountains expert, then I'd really like to hear from you. Um, that they need some, some freshening up. Um, there's a Killy book and the Draken, Drakensberg. Um, as well. Um, yeah. Also, probably, yeah, probably sorry, the Morocco and the Killy one. Is, yeah. Yeah. We've considered various others over the years, and I think if the right um, um, uh, the right guide for Uganda. In fact, we had a proposal for um, for the mountains of Uganda um, quite recently. Um, but determined that we probably shouldn't go ahead with it, um, mainly because independent tracking is just not an option. Um, there has to be for uh, that we found some balance of independent and organised um, approaches uh, in a, in an area or for a particular route for for a book to work. Yeah. Um, I yeah, think I went to. The, I, have, I have been to the Rue in Zuri, but that I mean that's one of the places that's not particularly safe at the moment I don't think so yeah a uh, lot but, of people going there now. Oh, man, I, I, I'm very jealous of you for having been it looks uh, looks incredible um, it would make a, a stunning book but it probably wouldn't make for stunning sales um, as is the case with quite a lot of our, our stuff really quite you know when we talk about something that's really sort of out of the corner way in um, uh, in uh, eastern Switzerland like the, the Silveretta um, or um, our eternal struggle to um, uh, to appeal to people to to go walking in uh, Carmarthenshire, um, love, lovely walking, but uh, not not that much interest there particularly. Okay, thank you. A any other questions for, on this topic? We can come back to it later. Last question, Joe. Joe Williams. Hey, Rachel. Nice to see you again. How are you? Um, I just uh, it's about running guides because running seems to be the thing, doesn't it? Fell running and um, guided running now. So I just wondered if you had any plans for any of that sort of guidebook. So yeah, we've got. Um, I suppose you kind of call it four. Um, oh, maybe I'll get that wrong. So we've got. Uh, uh, we've kicked things off with, as you can see on the screen there, Chamonix um, from um, Kingsley. Uh, we've got a Lake District Trail and Fell Running last year published a uh, Yorkshire Dales uh, guide. 
Um, we've got a sort of combination of instruction and um, reach and inspiration book on fast packing, um, which was a word that I'd never heard of um, for, uh, until, <laughs> until we were approached with the idea. Um, Multi-day running, back, backpacking running, that sort of thing. Um, and, um, and then a, a, a larger format guide to the big rounds, so the, the, the Bob Gray and Charlie Ramsey and Paddy Buckley. Um, yeah, we, we are keen to continue to grow that range, uh, definitely. I'm unconvinced that um, the format is absolutely right. Like, I'm never going to carry uh, that Lake District trail running book when I go for a run in the lakes. Um, but that's where our um, future developments um, and other formats sort of will, might, might come into play. We'll probably talk about that sort of thing uh, a bit later. But yeah, I think there is quite a lot of growth there. And I think the idea of running guiding, so like Kingsley Jones is, uh, is a running guide, is, um, is pretty, pretty appealing. Um, yeah, and I think it is, it is also a, a different kind of activity in, as, as quite a big runner myself um, and different skills that are required on top of um, our normal mountain and hill walking and mountaineering skills. Um, I mean, I personally found I had to totally relearn the idea of pacing and timing with regards to um, uh, fell running because it's just totally different. My perception of how long it would take me to cover a kilometer across the um, uh, between Eel Crag and Broad Crag near Scar Fell is totally different to how it would be when you're when you're walking. Um, so I think there is validity in, in that as a, as a separate enterprise. Okay, thank you. Good question. Um, if there aren't any more immediate questions, then maybe we're happy to move on uh, for the next one. So um, this is really about um, sort of shifts in the market. And what shifts have you noticed in the past sort of five, ten years, Joan? Well, there have been a few things that um, aren't necessarily shifts, but are uh, general trends. Um, European trekking has continued to be really strong uh, for us um, and seems to grow um, yeah, very much year on year. Um, Chamonix Zerna I was referred to as the, the other big, um, the other really major alpine route, but things like the, the GR5 and, um, um, and that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely very popular. Um, Caminos and which are the, the Spanish pilgrimage routes and um, well, principally Spanish um, and, and other European, principally European pilgrimage routes. Um, they're, they're, I mean, pilgrimage is a massive growth area um, and not just for those that are religiously inclined uh, as well. Um, the, there's pretty good availability on stats um, of the people that are finishing in Rome or in Santiago on one of these long walks. And they're very much, the majority are not necessarily doing it for uh, religious reasons. They might well be doing it for personal, just simply a personal challenge or because they might go for a good walk um, uh, or because, and this is, this is quite common because they're presented with a life changing situation or they're having a break between careers or maybe they've just got divorced or suffered a bereavement. It seems really common for people to just think, um, you know, screw it, I'm going to go and uh, walk the Camino Frances for the next month and, um, you know, clear my head. Um, so that, that, that's, a, that's a massive um, market. There's uh, sort of a a quarter of a million people that um, end up in Santiago having walked a minimum of 100 kilometres. Um, the English-speaking audience is, is huge there as well. Um, and yeah, as Rachel, um, Rachel already spotted, yeah, trail running is certainly another, another growth area. Um, a, bit like, a bit like road cycling, um, these are very popular activities, but they're sometimes hard to find exactly the right format of information um, for those users. Uh, 
I, is a book the right kind of thing or is our root cards better or is an app better? Um, uh, so yeah, there's sort of some, some challenges there. Uh, the obvious down is, um, is the techniques um, and sort of instructional uh, books. Um, clearly you guys are doing maybe too good a job or something. Um, but I think it's, it's a combination of that and the proliferation um, of information all around the internet. Um, and that you can get for free. You don't need um, you don't need a book to teach you how to tie a tie a figure of eight. You might be um, fine watching a YouTube video or or whatever whatever it might be. I, I mean, I find it a shame because um, I know, techniques books are sort of what I grew up with personally, um, and I inhaled um, uh, as a youngster. But um, they, I mean, they don't sell. Um, they're not, um, we can, personally at Cicero, we can sustain um, books that are slow sellers, but they still have to sell something. Um, and they do have to um, meet just sort of a, a, a fairly minimal viable level. Um, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a shame that those guys don't do uh, uh, any, any better. Uh, any questions around those, uh, those things? Um, Joe, I'm going to read out a question from Emily, unless Emily wants to unmute and ask it herself. Um, uh, yeah, can do. Um, yeah. I was just wondering, uh, you mentioned about road biking, um, that with the growth of cycling, particularly at the moment, whether you were considering mountain biking guidebooks. Uh, there's a couple of publishers that do some, but there's not a significant amount of guidebooks out there aimed at the mountain biker. Yeah, good, good question, Emily. Um, we've got a few. Um, let's see, five-ish maybe, so mountain biking in South Downs, Lake District, the Yorkshire Dales, North and West Scotland, Central and Southern Scotland, but I, I think that there is much, only some of those sell well. Um, we, uh, we have a, a terrible nightmare getting um, uh, cycling shops to actually stock books. They're not the kind of things that are you know, particularly profitable for them to be actually selling themselves. So that leaves us with um, mostly with the, the online sales channels. Um, I think that there is um, an opportunity for more very specific mountain biking um, books to vote to specific areas. So um, I would think that Ari Moore and the Northern Cairngorms um, have got there's a lot of mountain biking on offer there. Um, really high quality stuff. Uh, we don't have a book for it. I think there probably should be. Um, uh, yeah, so we've got a few, but um, they've never been sort of like lightning, but that again is maybe the indication that the format's not quite, not quite right. Okay, thank you. Any more before we move on? Cool. Okay, great. So um, here's a nice, I think this is a nice question for you, Joe. Um, what new guidebooks are uh, Cicero I'm really proud of? Uh, yeah, here's a nice question. Um, get to think about all the hard work that we put into some of these things and, um, uh, and then see them come to fruition. Um, yeah, it's, it's obviously as an author, um, uh, it's very satisfying to to, you know, to see your book in print, but I think um, there's a few of these books that I've um, uh, edited myself directly because they're maybe a bit more relevant to my particular um, experience. Um, and yeah, seeing see a book that you've worked on, um, uh, yeah, the printed copy come through the um, the letterbox is uh, is pretty good. So yeah, I'll, I'll talk about three. the the cool one that I already mentioned. Um, has anyone got this cool one? Uh, if you have, maybe whack a whack an annotation on. Um, as if if, if um, the majority of you guys are mountaineering um, uh, instructors as well as uh, walking or or, uh, or biking, then um, I think it'll uh, probably appeal. Um, maybe also let's have a on the. Of the cooling ridge traverse that all whatever shape that thing is um put a put a put an annotation on there if you've done the cooling ridge 
uh, Mentiverse, please. I can't actually put a, put a tick on there myself because I've been foiled by bad weather uh, twice. Um, cool, we're getting a few ticks. Um, I mean, it's not yet. Yes, agree. Um, yeah, amazing stuff. Um, so we had a, a proposal from a guy called Adrian Trendall, who's a guide that lives um, um, in concerts right at the foot of Bame, just before you get to uh, um, Stigachen. And um, yeah, his vision was for a really specific book, um, just to the ridge, loads of topos, really uh, as much detailed mapping and um, uh, diagrams as possible. Um, and um, yeah, we sort of we, we um, rolled around with the idea and eventually came to the conclusion that it should be sort of two books in one. So uh, a slightly larger first volume with skills, um, uh, tips, strategies, uh, and uh, 10 classic scrambles that could be really good practice routes, um, so like Pinnacle Ridge and um, the Dubes Ridge and around the Cory Lag and that, that sort of thing. Um, and then in the second volume, much slimmer, uh, just the stuff for the Ridge Traverse uh, itself. So it includes like bypasses and we've got Harvey, uh, we negotiated with Harvey to, to sort of modify some of their one to 12 and a half thousand mapping. Um, so it's super detailed uh, in there. There's a few other specific diagrams. Um, I can't wait. I was maybe in, in uh, Sky um, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, but I can't wait to actually use the book myself. I think it would now having, uh, I, I edited it and I think not, if I get lost on the ridge, then uh, I've really only got myself to blame. Um, but that, yeah, that's something really well. Um, and it's, it, it, it is very, yeah, very, very specific detailed information uh, in there. Um, to the right of that, we've got a picture of a couple of runners. This is the, the big rounds uh, guide, slightly larger format. Um, and it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a book that is illuminating for walkers and backpackers and providing uh, the right kind of sustainable information for um, hill and fell runners to do um, the Bob Graham, Paddy Buckley or Charlie Ramsey's round. Um, yeah, so David Linton, I think, is a, he's a, he's a, a journalist, but a fantastic photographer um, as well. He came, put, put together a gorgeous book. So very, yeah, really pleased with that. Um, and uh, it was quite a fine balance, really, because we, um, we really wanted to respect the ethos of those rounds um, by not totally explaining everything about uh, about where the route goes and um if we were if basically if we were mentioning the word um uh, the words find a little trod um two meters to your to the right of the the large boulder then that would be far too much than that we wanted to do um and we deliberately included um a small scale uh mapping rather than anything more detailed um yeah, just to, to try to respect that, uh, that, that side of the round. Um, I'll be using it um, for a bit more planning information to do the uh, Paddy Buckley, hopefully later this year. Um, I've done the other two, so I need to sort of <laughs> crack that one off to, to complete the trilogy. Uh, and then, yeah, the last one there, the Camino Frances. Um, the Camino Frances is, for those that don't know, is the most popular um, of the Spanish pilgrimage routes. And um, I don't know, there's, there's out of that quarter of a million or so people that do it, probably over 100,000 people, um, uh, if not more, are on the Camino Frances. Um, it starts just in the... Um, French side of the Pyrenees in Saint Jean Pied de Port um, runs across northern Spain to Santiago about a month. Uh, there are about a thousand um, places that you can stay 
um, on the route. Uh, little albergues and hostels and, um, and that sort of thing. And we took a similar approach to the Kirtland Ridge book and did two books in one, one larger thing for the overall planning information and sort of detailed phone numbers and um, website addresses and details of the facilities of these accommodations. And then we put together a, a, a map booklet, which is what that little, little extract there is, um, showing what is in uh, each of these little villages where the bars and the, uh, the cafes and the churches and the et cetera, et cetera, are. Um, so yeah, quite, quite proud of that. It, with so much detail in there, it took, um, it took a fair bit longer than normal to actually make the book. Um, so it's normally nine months, uh, between when we receive a, um, manuscript and other, um, materials. Uh, from an author to when it's um, uh, in the warehouse ready to send to customers. Uh, this took, I think, probably more like 10 or 11 months. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we also have been working on a, an app version uh, for this as well. That app is, um, I guess, it's kind of a good time to start talking about that too. Um, it's forming the basis of, of a platform for um, all of our long distance routes. Um, and it should well, it could well be quite good f with some modifications for cycle touring, um, I think as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of work going into that as well. It's not launched yet, but um, hopefully later in the year. Any questions about any of those things or any other, other Cicerone books that you've come across and wanted to find out a bit more about? Yeah, there are a number of questions on the chat. So if oh, okay. I ask Alex, who had put a couple of questions in first. So Alex, I don't know if you want to unmute or I can just read them. Um, I, was, I was asking whether you do any, any kind of nature type books, you know, um, flora and flora, that kind of thing that seems to be quite popular in the, the sort of mountaineering and hill walking. Uh, Leaders. Yeah, it's, good, it's, it's a good, good question. Actually, we've, uh, we've we've got one, um, and it's called Alpine Flowers. Uh, it's one of the little mini guides, so it's very really slim, and um, you know, it fit into like a under your top pocket in your rucksack, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, there's. I know that, that that's an area that I really struggled with personally in the, in my ML stuff. I remember getting sort of later on in the assessment week, and um, and the the instructors sort of saying that if you don't actually start spotting some kinds of moss, then I'm going to fail you. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I think maybe a, a slim volume just for um, for the kinds of things we should be looking out for in the UK. Um, could be quite good. Thanks for the idea. Okay. Um, there was a question uh, from uh, Christine Quayle. Um, so, Christine, I don't know if you want if you want to unmute, or I can just say that. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I'm on the wrong account. Um, yeah, I was just interested in what would make a good guidebook. Um. I'll, I, th I suppose I can probably come on to that next, actually. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, I'll talk about, it's often, well, okay. I'll talk about uh, next what um, makes a good author, um, because they're, they're, they're somewhat synonymous. Um, but uh, in terms of what makes a good book, uh, it depends what uh, what you define well what what you are measuring good as uh, sales is one thing um, um, uh, accuracy of content uh, I suppose is another um, whether it is fulfilling the needs of the uh, the end user um, you know there's all sorts of measures but um, ultimately if um, if it, it, for us if it's selling well and um, we're getting positive feedback uh, on it then uh, and also if it has long longevity if it's the kind of book that we uh, go through many editions of then to me that's a, that's a good guidebook 
Um, I'm in discussions with um, Mike Pescard and um, Blair Fife and his dad, uh, Alan, on the Winter Climbs uh, uh, books to the to Loch Abba and the Cairngorms at the moment. We're looking at um, really upping our game for new editions of those. As I've not really been particularly happy with their usability um, over the last few years. Um, and so I think we can do some really good things with that. But they've gone through like multiple authors and they're on their like, I don't know, eighth, ninth, tenth editions or something like that. If it's gone, if it's been handed through many authors um, over the years and sustained solid sales all over those years, then that's a pretty good book in my mind. Okay. Did that to get anywhere close to answering your question? Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about some of those things in a little bit more, little bit more detail when I talk about sort of author requirements. Um, thanks, Joe. Before we go on to that, there was a, another question from Alex. Uh, uh, who are your main competitors? Um, yeah, so let's see, Trailblazer. Um, UK and um, some international stuff. Um, Vertebrate do uh, do some guides as well as their um, uh, mountain literature. Um, there's quite a few competitors on the Caminos, uh, the pilgrimage side of things. Um, obviously, it's such a large market; it really can sustain a variety of um, uh, uh, of competitive products. Um, I mean, we. We don't really position ourselves much in the um, sort of lower and more beginner and more casual end of the market. Um, so the sort of short, easy um, pub walks, um, we've not got much coverage to them. Um, and there are a number of competitors in that, uh, that area. Um, but I think sort of, uh, yeah, kind of change all the time. There's there's often new publishers um, popping up, and particularly those that just specialise in just one one or two routes. But um, I mean, I think for us that we like that we can sustain a list of titles that's sort of not far off four hundred, um, and that we can sell these books uh, globally. Um, I mean, seventy five percent of our um, sales are in the UK. There's uh, a lot in the US and um, uh, European countries and uh, pretty much every other major English speaking uh, country. Okay, thanks Joe. There is a question from Emily, but I think if we move on to the authors that might, um, you know, that might be addressed and if not we'll come back to it. Um, oh. So, yeah, tell us, how, how do you find your authors, Joe? Uh, well, um, a few ways. There's, they're either new um, or they're existing. Um, it's got a picture of a couple of, um, a couple of uh, existing uh, authors here. Um, so, if I'll just talk about new first. Um, we find new authors typically by them coming to us. Um, approaching me. Um, we've got a, a contribute section on the website that um, really lays out the um, guidance and the kind of criteria that we're looking for for new books and, and, and new projects. Um, there's a template that, um, that authors can, prospective authors can fill in with their idea. Um, that generally gives me about everything I need to know if it's been filled in sufficiently as to whether the book or, um, and or the author is um, the right to go ahead with. Um, we then, um, so I, I generally tend to assess that proposal and, and tweak it uh, and discuss it with that uh, prospective author and then I present it to our commissioning team who will um, kind of tear it apart, uh, really, um, often for uh, hours on end um, to see 
uh, you know, is it is it a, is it a goer or or not? And if it if it is, how can we uh, sort of reshape it and craft it to being exactly the right thing? I mean, it was it was in that commissioning meeting that we that our marketing and communications manager um, uh, suggested splitting the cooling book into two with the the, the slim slim uh, volume just for the ridge itself. Um, and yeah, without that meeting and the, uh, that other kind of feedback from the different different departments, we don't, we don't get ideas for that. It would just be me flailing around. Mm. Um, uh, existing authors, but yeah, one or more book authors. Um, Paddy Dillon on the right here. Um, Paddy's written. I mean, I've no idea how many books he's written over the years. Um, if you're if you consider that a new edition of a book um, is pretty much just the same amount as a wor of work as um, uh, and, uh, the, the first edition uh, of it, then you know he'll be into the hundreds and hundreds, uh, I would think. Um, yeah, Paddy is one of the few people that is um, uh, a professional guidebook writer. He doesn't really do much else. Um, I don't know. He does the odd talk, but really not not much. Um, Kev Reynolds on the left. Um, Kev has written um, uh, guides to uh, walking in the Alps, in the Pyrenees, Himalaya, uh, Kent, um, where he lives. Um, Kev's been, uh, I think his first book was 1970, I think it was Eight Walks and Climbs in the Pyrenees. That's another one of those books that's in its X edition. Um, and yeah, there are, there are many more um, uh, authors that we've worked with for, um, uh, for years, but it's pretty, with someone like Paddy, it's, it's pretty easy because you sort of say, either, either we have an idea or he has an idea. Um, and you sort of just said, off you go, um, given the deadline, and you know exactly what you're going to be getting. Um, uh, six months, um, 18 months, or even a f um, sort of four years later. Uh, Paddy's got so many books, we have to manage his, um, his workload sort of very closely. Um, so he's got books, uh, new, new editions that are contracted in for till I think he's got something in for 2025, um, but yeah, it's it's all quite quite structured. I went um, um, for a I walk. Think... Sorry, sorry, Joe. I went for a walk oh. with Paddy Paddy once, and it was extraordinary. Watch because he was at working while he was sort of, and he had an old version of some sort of laptop thing, like a yeah. old Palm Pilot, and he literally every every few feet just stop and write something down, and it was it was really interesting to watch him work. Yeah, that's right. Paddy's always used. Um, the most helpful technology for him, um, as as yeah, as as time has gone on, um, yeah, he's very very slick. It doesn't take him long to get back from um, from a trip, um, and, uh, and and get materials to us. It's it's really impressive. Uh, but I mean, his attention to detail is um, is amazing uh, too. Um, I think as an for a new author, particularly uh, approaching us, um, being aware of the commercial possibilities for the project, um, rather than just leaving it to us to think about that, um, is, is really important because um, we are not solely focused on um, publishing books that meet certain sales criteria. Um, if there is an area that has unbelievable walking and really would work for uh, independent and organised group um, visitors, then uh, you know then we'll we'll do it. And some incredibly poor, poor, poorly performing titles that we've published over the years, but are gorgeous books and incredibly well uh, well written and, and produced. Um, but an awareness of those commercial possibility uh, possibilities and the realities of, of it. Uh, is very important. So we have a section on that proposal template where I uh, invite people to um, give evidence on um, um, on the kind of interest that um, there is in an area or, or a route. 
and um, it's you know when, when I see things sort of like uh, according to the such and such survey uh, such and such national uh, tourism survey um, 1.3 million Brits visit Spain uh, every year uh, that's you know that's not helpful um, it tells me that there's a, a, a potentially enormous market but um, uh, is it is it exactly the right community that we're that we're talking about here? Um, so yeah, I'll just go through a few more sort of things that we that we really look for. Writing, obviously, um, although writing is not the be all and end all. You can't just have uh, be a, an, an excellent um, writer, and uh, these these other elements can be sort of forsaken. Uh, it's one of the of the various uh, elements. So that includes obviously concise route descriptions um, and the more inspirational um, introductions to the sections, but also the ability to write um, promotional articles, uh, things that we put on Cicero and Extra and you know share on social media. Um, the ability to write in those different kind of um, formats and uh, is yeah is really important. And it's amazing just comparing like the writing of Kev and Paddy uh, on the screens there. Like they have, when you're reading their route descriptions, they're very clear, but they are quite a different style. You would sort of think, how many ways can you actually say to uh, go over the bridge and turn left? But actually, there's there's a few, and they do them elegantly uh, in different ways. Um, but it can't actually be done be done quite poorly. Um, it is certainly possible to do the uh, the waxing lyrical um, writing and really fail on um, uh, abundantly clear root description. And we have we have sort of seen that before. Uh, excellent photog in photography. Um, yeah, we we absolutely need that. Uh, I rejected many proposals to great routes um, potentially really good writers but it's not in our model to employ um, freelance photographers uh, other than extremely exceptional circumstances um, so the, the author needs to bring that uh, photography um, with them um, but I mean uh, we've we've concluded recently that we would be happy to take photos that, that have been accept photos that have been taken on an iPhone 11 plus my the designers have said yeah we do this and that's that's fine um, you know those taken on poorer kind of quality camera phones uh, obviously not but I'd generally be recommending like a camera of, um, uh, something like with a one inch sensor or larger, like a Sony RX100 and above, or um, uh, an absolutely top end um, uh, smartphone. Mapping, um, the ability to create, uh, edit, and uh, organize GPX files, um, detail orientation to um, uh, editing maps, particularly for those to international areas. Uh, where we work with a mapping partner um, and the you know, authors can suggest how we should amend those uh, mapping extracts. Um, just simply organisational skills because it's uh, a guidebook project might take years to come to fruition. There's many elements involved and um, keeping track of it all is yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty challenging, I think. Um, communication with us. Um, sort of keeping us up to speed on how things are going. Um, I suppose being um, respectful of our um, experience um, that we have in house. Um, you know, we've got some, uh, I believe, some of the best uh, uh, walking and trekking guidebook editors um, uh, in the world. Um, and um, but at the same time, like there, there are clearly elements of our process that are um, unsatisfactory. So hearing how we can improve uh, on that's yeah really important. And um, yeah, marketing and community position. Um, if you already have a, a 
a sizable social media following or you administer a, uh, a Facebook group like Adrian does called, uh, for his All Things Cooling. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are actually members of that group. It's, it's an excellent community uh, that's talking to exactly the right kind of people. So when it comes to, um, to selling that book, it's um, frankly a piece of cake. Uh, you know, you know, you know exactly who you um, who wants wants the book, um, but that so, some element of marketing maps and uh, willingness to get involved um, uh, will, is is very important. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions that they want me to elaborate on in that kind of area? Um, there's, yeah, I think it's it's a. We obviously assess each project and each author on a very much individual basis, and it can it can be difficult when an author maybe comes close to meeting those things. But um, you know, suddenly improving one's photography when most of the sample photos that I might look at are of um, you know dark clouds and you know they've got like a finger in the way of the lens. Um, that's not going to change like that. Whereas um, Improving, uh, improving GPX file um, uh, abilities is is more doable. Um, Joe, we've there are a few questions on the chat, and we've got a, a give or take six minutes. We can potentially extend slightly if if you're willing, but you know we haven't got a huge amount of time. Oh, my fault. I've been No, 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 that, that's fine. Um, there's just, I mean, there. there I'll just quickly ask a couple of questions, if that's okay, before we move on. So when did, there's a, one of the questions from Emily was, when do you do a full rewrite of an, an old title? You know, at what point, I guess, do you make that call? Um, it depends. We definitely don't really want it to get beyond 10 years, um, five if it's a more popular title. But every time that we uh, run out of stock, or get low on stock of a book, then we um, try to reprint it with as many updates as uh, feasibly possible. So that might be, I mean, for something like the, a particularly long um, um, national trail in the UK, then, um, so yeah, like uh, Southwest Coast Path, we reprint that probably on like an annual basis. Um, Paddy supplies us uh, updates, um, you know, the there's a little bit uh, the path has sort of been rerouted here because the cliff's fallen down or this B and B has closed and that one's changed its uh, website address. Just make sure that like every time we're reprinting it, it's it's updated. I don't think we really make that clear um, all the time um, uh, when we are um, publicising uh, those those reprints. Um, but. There's, the thing is, is some, there are some books that we, we feel, yes, maybe it's, it, it is getting a bit old, but is it still providing um, some level of valuable information uh, without being dangerous, uh, obviously, and, or mis misleading, uh, or I, don't know, I suppose damaging to the brand um, as well. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one. Ultimately, we probably have too many books to keep updated than we absolutely have time for. Um, and that is a bit frustrating. Okay. Um, Joe, I'm mindful of the time, so yeah. I'm gonna come back to a couple of questions afterwards, but if, oh. we, if we move on, if that's okay. Oh. So, I mean, obviously prior to COVID-19, what were you anticipating in terms of business growth? You know, what's, what have, what's emerged? Um, yeah, well, 2019 was a good year. Um, I suppose we were expecting 2020 to be a good year. Um, uh, I think that the difficulty is that Cicerone is obviously a publisher, but it's a, a, not just an outdoor publisher, but a travel publisher. Um, hence the impact on the, the travel um, industry as a whole uh, do relate to us if it's very expensive to fly to um, uh, even a short haul European destination um, next year, then that's going to impact us. If it's impossible for Americans to leave their country and walk the Tour of Mont Blanc this summer, then that's going to impact us. But um, you know, there's no point in me complaining when I can totally, can totally 
see and understand the um, horrendous situation that most of you guys uh, have been in in the last few months. Um, uh, you know, obviously, not being able to work at all. Um, so it's yeah, very hopeful that things can um, can start picking up a bit more um, for you all there. Um, yeah, we had um, we had a new a new Camino book um, and a new TMB um, new edition that I think we had sort of we still have high hopes for them. It'll just take a while to sort of really pick themselves up and get going. Recently, uh, this might be some kind of more relevant. We have um, at least on our own website uh, yeah. been seeing a lot of people buying the. Um, UK National Trails and other long distance uh, books. The Cape Wrath Trail was our bestseller on the website for, um, it was particularly in the middle of lockdown, really, that was um, selling really strongly. I think people were thinking, oh, I really want to just sort of escape and just get my tent out and um, really go wild. Uh, and, you know, nobody with COVID is going to be around me at this point. Um, but you know, even having said that, people were not able to be going on the Cape Wrath Trail. They were planning. So there's been a lot of planning going on. Um, similarly, um, many European trekking books, uh, I noticed that the Pyrenean Hope Route was doing really well. And in fact, I mean, for IMLs running um, uh, those kind of trips, that'd be a, a, an amazing one. Um, but yeah, people are people are clearly planning these things. Um, Cicerone, because it's um, talking to the more committed uh, uh, hillgoer um, rather than more incidental, then I think people are really eager to get back on the hills. And as soon as you are we're legally allowed to, we're we're going to. Um, yeah, people are really keen to get back uh, to to the UK mountains and um, and overseas mountains too. Yeah, thanks, Joe. And I guess that leads on, you know, as we know, people have been exercising with predominantly family members, you know, for some time. Um, what do you envisage happening going forwards? Um, well, I think we currently have seen, um, incidentally, more family groups out and about um, in, uh, you know, particularly in the Lake District where, uh, where Cicero is based. Um, I mean, we we published this book, Outdoor Adventures with Children, a year or so ago, and it has it, it it at the moment it's only a sort of a standalone guide, but it'd be interesting to see whether it could work as a, a growing series, um, and getting getting younger people uh, inspired to uh, to be going into the mountains and looking after the mountains um, in in the future. So I'm, I'm hesitant to say about how much um, of that sort of mountain activity has been going on among families, but I can certainly see there has been more families going to the beautiful places in this country and um, perhaps um, initiating that love for, for these places. Um, so hopefully we'll see a bit more bit more of a, a trend in that in that area. Okay. Thanks, Joe. And um, what type of experiences do you think people will be looking for in the outdoors, you know, in the next few months? Moving yeah, um, we did a, a, a survey this, this last week, actually, of um, newsletter subscribers who um, uh, are showing more of an inclination towards UK-based um, uh, activities rather than international ones. Um, so, and it's actually it's even more so with the hill walking and um, sort of single day activities rather than backpacking and, um, uh, and long distance. That would be, you know, that's just, that's definitely an area that that customers are telling us they are um, more interested in right now. Um, yeah, there's, um, I think that there is probably, a, we, we sell books to a variety of walking holiday companies, particularly larger ones, um, uh, for guided and self-guided trips. 
Um, and um, that's that kind of relationship that's, uh, that's yeah, very helpful so that we can, we've obviously been able to produce a book that works well for the independent traveler, but also somebody that is on an organized trip um, to you know, give a bit more background to their, to their route or that naturally the walking holiday might refer uh, their clients just to the route description within the guidebook. Um, those are probably the, the main kind of growth areas. Okay, thanks, Joe. We have run over. Are you okay just for another couple of minutes? Just one I'm fine if everyone else is. I do apologise for the rambling. Oh, that's all right. It's, all right. it's also my, my time management there. Um, yeah, so anything else you'd, you'd like to share with us, probably? Um, Any other well, I put this together, some, some thoughts that might, might, might be nice to talk about. I'm probably out of time for many of these things, but... Um, we definitely want to develop our UK mountains guides um, a bit more. Um, uh, the people on this webinar are certainly the right kind of people to um, maybe inform uh, that or, or get involved with that. Um, um, we're developing our partnership with uh, Mountain Training, which we're yeah pr pretty excited about, um, and yeah together with you guys trying to uh, trying to prevent the eternal battle of coming across people in the mountains um with a, a road atlas in their hand or no map whatsoever or wondering where scarfell pike is um some some level of working together and partnership on um um i don't know on trying to figure out the, the right ways through that is um, is quite interesting. Um, and then again, I think, I mean, I, we've got ideas um, to promote greater diversity um, in terms of uh, Hill users and uh, writers, uh, authors and, uh, and leaders. Um, but I think we've got, we've clearly got a miles to go um in in that respect um anyway there's sort of some kickstarters to to conversations that we can have either either now or um you know bring me up uh, drop me an email okay thanks joe sure um yeah thank you uh, thank you so much and um i'll yeah i'm here for more questions or there's my email address there um uh, as you guys like there were a couple of questions that were on the chat, Joe, and if uh, I'll just quickly uh, read a couple of those out, if that's okay. Um, yeah. Peter uh, wanted to know if there are any plans for continental backpacking classics. Continental backpacking classics? Yeah. Bikepacking. Um, bikepacking. I beg your pardon. Oh, bike, bikepacking. Sorry. Uh, does this... Um, I'm just trying to find the, the, the question exactly. Um, I find that a slightly ambiguous question because it maybe it's referring to the Continental Divide Trail in the US, or maybe it's classic bikepacking routes uh, on the continent. Um, either way, bikepacking is something that we would like to uh, an area that we'd like to start publishing in. Um, I think it's an amazing activity, uh, and um, it's clearly something that the, the bike brands are all over. Um, uh, so there, there is a market there and we'd like to explore that uh, more but yeah whether it's continental europe or the continental divide trail um both of those are, are on, on, <laughs> on my watch list okay um kieran uh, had a couple of questions uh so i'm not sure if he uh would like to ask those He's... i think i think kieran's had to go so i can... yeah kieran had to go hasn't he so but but there are quite there are quite some good questions how's the balance of the how is the balance of the format content of books changing and are ebooks sales popular um, yeah, it's a really good question. Uh, Ebook sales as a percentage of our total have remained really constant for, well, we've been doing ebooks for like since they were invented, um, so well over a decade, uh, if not a couple. Um, yeah, they've remained really steady at um, uh, around 5% uh, of sales. 
Mm. Um, but in terms of how content has changed, um, I think we're approaching a bit of a shift in reducing, um, kind of reducing size uh, of books if possible. Um, perhaps removing much of the background introductory information uh, or making it removable uh, or moving it to, um, to online um, you know, depositories. Um, uh, the app is probably the best thing to look at um, or a variety of apps um, as we'll be heading towards. Um, I think it's it's a bit different, you know, to try and get um, winter climbs in the Cairngorms into uh, app format, um, which may well theoretically work, but in practice is <laughs> is a non-starter. Um, but uh, you know, for for us for a bike tour, um, or yeah, Man's End, John O'Groats, or um, uh, a long distance walk, I think it's um, I think it's fantastic. Um, and yeah, we're, we'll be getting into the beta testing of that later in the year. Okay, thanks, Joe. Um, I think um, unless there are any other final questions, we'll pretty much uh, wrap up there. I'll just give it a sec in case anyone else would like to ask. Well, no, I can uh, see some of the comments that I'm sort of apologies like absolutely ignored uh, while I've been um, spouting on. Um, but yeah, very lovely to hear the, <laughs> the positive words that you guys have, uh, have put there. And um, yeah, like my email address is there, uh, love to hear from anybody. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Joe. Uh, we're delighted to have you know, had your insight and input this morning. Um, and if we could just scroll on to the next um, couple of slides, that will be lovely. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, please pass on our thanks to all at Cicerone. Uh, as ever, if we go on to the next slide, we do uh, love to have your feedback. Uh, that's really helpful for us. And finally, we hope to see uh, all of you, many of you, next week when we welcome um, Mike Rain from uh, Plassey Brennan, which the, if we just have the final slide, Joe, um, that will be lovely. And Mike, we've got an environmental slant, uh, which we've uh, sort of been missing a bit. And Mike will be talking uh, about nature of Snowdonia. So same time next week. So uh, finally, again, thank you so much once again, Joe, for giving us uh, your time and expertise this morning. We hope it's been helpful for everybody. Um, enjoy your Wednesday and let's hope the rain holds off for a little bit. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.